The Tatra National Park is one of the places most often chosen by Poles as a place to rest during holidays, winter breaks or vacation in any month of the year. This is because it protects the Tatra Mountains, the highest mountain chain in the Carpathian Range. You can admire the beautiful landscapes here, face your own weaknesses and observe animals that you cannot find in other parts of the country. The Tatra Mountains were created millions of years ago and the Tatra National Park has protected this area since 1955. It covers an area of almost 212 square kilometers, but it is only the Polish part of the mountains which are also present in Slovakia. This is why the southern border of the park is also the northern border of its Slovak counterpart which protects the rest of the Tatra Mountains. I honestly admit that I love this place. I have been to Tatras many times, but I can never get enough of them. The Tatra National Park offers 275 kilometers of hiking trails that have varying degrees of difficulty. I intend to travel some of them during the next few days and take a good look at the local nature. The Tatras are alpine type mountains in which we can easily find sharp peaks, ridges or U-shaped valleys. These are the highest mountains in Europe just after the Alps to which they are supposedly similar. I am in Zakopane which is by many people called the capital of the Tatra mountains and behind my back you can see the Gevont rising above the city. This is a very characteristic mountain and although it seems to be the highest in the area it is only an illusion. This mountain is almost like a symbol of Zakopane and its shape resembles a lying man. A knight with whom local legends are associated. One version of the story says that the stone knight woke up and rose when Poland would be in serious danger. While another tells about a group of knights and their horses sleeping inside of the Gevont Caves who woke up when the country would be threatened. The truth is that once you see the sleeping knight in the shape of Gevon, it is difficult to look at this mountain and not see it. The symbol of the Tatra National Park is the Shamwas, which is in its logo, but there are three animal symbols. Shamwas, bear and marmot. I would like to see them all and it is possible. Every year tourists observe all of these three species of animals here without even leaving the trails. In the mountains, climatic conditions change with altitudes. The higher we are, the more difficult are the conditions and some plant species give way to others better adapted to the given place. Walking around the Tatra National Park we can observe 5 vegetation degrees. Submontain, Mountain, Subalpine, Alpine, Nivel. The sub mountain degree is the lowest and reaches approximately to 1250 meters above sea level. It consists of beautiful mountain forests, often cut by streams. Trees dominate here, such as beech and fir, but you can also find a lot of spruces that were once planted by people. However, the Tatra National Park is trying to restore the original species composition of tree stands of sub mountain degree and instead of spruces, people plant firs, beeches and sycamores. Above the sub mountain lies the mountain degree, which reaches a height of about 1550 meters above sea level. It is built of forests, mainly spruce, and closer to the ground, under the crowns of trees, you can admire the mosses and ferns that dominate here on the forest floor. On its upper border, the mountain degree often ends with Swiss pine, a pine species not higher than 20 meters. When approaching the upper border, it's worth looking for the Swiss pine. There it is. One Swiss pine is growing in front of me. It is a species of pine that is easy to recognize because it has needles in bundles of five instead of two as in the case of Scots pine. 
This tree is a real tough one. It can take a root in the rocks, resist strong winds, sometimes also avalanches, and all of this in very difficult climate conditions. If here we have Swiss pine, we will probably see the next vegetation degree in a moment. It is also worth mentioning about an animal that I saw the other day. Spotted nutcracker is an interesting representative of the crow family, rarely observed in Poland. It is distinguished by small white, drop-shaped spots that cover a significant part of its dark chocolate plumage. This bird loves nuts, for example hazelnuts, which it is able to split with a strong beak. In the mountains they eagerly eat Swiss pine seeds and, by hiding supplies for the winter, they help sprout many trees. This is the subalpine degree reaching up to 1800 meters above sea level, and it's covered by dwarf mountain pine. Interestingly, the higher we go in the mountains, the lower these plants will be. Dwarf mountain pine is a species of pine that grows on the slopes of the local mountains with large thickets or smaller and rarer patches. This plant strengthens the mountain slopes and also retains snow and stones among its branches, protecting against avalanches and large amounts of water. Along with the dwarf mountain pine, we meet many other species of low plants that cope with these difficult conditions. The dwarf mountain pine creates dense patches on the Tatra slopes and inside of its thickets many animals find shelter. This may be, for example, the marmot, which I'm looking for and which is found in this vegetation degree but prefers grassy fragments here. In addition, it can be more often seen in the alpine degree in the places where it can dig burrows for itself. Above the subalpine degree, there is an alpine degree ending at an altitude of 2300 meters above sea level. There are less dwarf mountain pines and they give way to short plants hugged to the ground. Living conditions are very difficult here, strong winds, low temperatures, long snow cover and drought in summer. It's not easy. That's the reason why number of plant species has decreased significantly compared to the lower altitudes. However, the chances of meeting marmots and chamois increase here, which is why my eyes are wide open. Three chamois next to us here on Wołowiec, on the trail, on the trail where people walk. Such meetings happen in the Tatra mountains and it is something beautiful. It was worth coming here. Chamois have an easier task when it comes to walking on the rocks. Another, 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 another group. Three young and one large. One adult chamois. The chamois hooves are adapted for walking in such terrain due to the fact that they have hard edges that make it easier for them to walk on the frozen snow. But in the summer, when there is no snow, these edges abrade on the rocks and thanks to that, a soft part of the hooves is able to fit the rock like a rubber, so chamois can easily move in such terrain. Beautiful, beautiful meeting, incredible.
We have finally reached the last, the highest degree of vegetation, the navel. The number of plants decreases rapidly with increasing height, but survival in such extreme conditions is a really difficult task. In spite of all, small, low plants still grow here, although it may seem that the landscape is dominated by bare rocks and rough slopes. Still, moles, lichen and vascular plants find their place here. I love such mountains, full of rocks, row, they always delight me. However, it doesn't change the fact that the local plants and animals belong to the toughest ones and they impress with their endurance. At high altitude, I've met the bird I was looking for. The alpine ascenda is a species typical for high mountain areas and not often found in Poland. It's quite secretive and looks a bit like a sparrow. However, if you look at it, it's easy to see that it's just an illusion. This time I go towards the valley of five Polish ponds. This road has the same beginning with the road to the eye of the sea, which is very easy, but unfortunately it has its dark side, the suffering of horses. Instead of walking to the eye of the sea, tourists stay in lines to wagons that are pulled by horses. The animals do very hard work pulling wagons filled with people uphill and later downwards. This is extremely hard work, which often leads to the fact that exhausted horses fall on the road and even die here on the trail. Unfortunately, the park authorities still allow this despite the fact that sick people, parents with strollers and even those who help disabled people in wheelchair reach the eye of the sea by their own. We should not accept the suffering of innocent animals. The noise is increasing, and that's because I'm approaching the Wielka Siklava, the largest waterfall in Poland. Every minute, thousands of liters of water fall from a height of almost 70 meters and crash on the rocks. Be careful near the waterfall, because the wet rocks here can be very slippery. However, it's worth seeing this place and a beautiful demonstration of the power of nature. The lakes are a permanent component of the local landscape. There are several dozen of them in the Polish Tatra mountains and they are signs of the glacier's activity during the Ice Age. The lakes are characterized by clear water and poor life and many of them remain icebound for most of the year. These are alpine type reservoirs with clear water and poor life but tourist traffic unfortunately affects the local waters. Mm -hmm. 
down there we have the eye of the sea. Once stories were told about this connection with the sea, but today it is known that despite its great depth, reaching even more than 50 meters, there is no such connection under the water surface. This is not just any lake, because it has the largest surface of all that are in the park. However, it's not the highest one. Above Eye of the Sea is, for example, the Black Lake below Mount Rise, lying behind it. And the highest lake in the park is somewhere there. It's called Zadni Mnichowy Stavek. There are many river trouts in the eye of the sea and it is the only lake in the Polish part of the Tatra mountains where fish occur naturally. Tourists like to admire them on the backdrop of the local peaks. Unfortunately, various pollutants end up in the eye of the sea and people feed fish with what they have at the moment. The lake is changing. Algae begin to appear inside of it, just like suntan lotion stains, and there are plastic debris on the shores. I hope people will be more careful and respect this amazing ecosystem. I came to the Tatra National Park to get to know the local nature and take a closer look at it. However, it's time to leave this place, so I wanted to see the area again. And what place would be more appropriate to do it, if not the highest peak of the Tatra National Park and also the highest point in Poland? Rysy rises to a height of 2503 meters above sea level. And this is where I say goodbye to the Tatras this time. There is a beautiful nature under my feet, which I will want to see many more times in the future.